Hey everybody, my name is John, and today I'm going to talk to you about an in-ear monitoring system for musicians on a budget like myself. Now the system I'm going to be talking to you about today is a wired system that is actually meant for musicians who are standing up and moving around like a guitar player or a singer. If you're a musician who sits like a drummer or maybe a keyboard player, then this rig will still work for you. You just won't need every single thing I'm going to talk about here, which is nice because it will make it even less expensive for you. Now before I tell you about what you'll need and how it all works, I wanted to take a second to list some of the pros and cons of having a wired system. So the first and most obvious pro is that you're going to be spending a lot less money with a wired system. For a wireless system, you'll be spending hundreds and hundreds more dollars to have a reliable system that's not going to be too staticky and won't be cutting in and out all the time. Another pro is that even with high-end wireless systems, you'll still have to deal with static and interference sometimes, and sometimes you'll get a sharp ear-piercing noise out of nowhere. And I find with a wired system, you don't have to deal with stuff like that nearly as often. Now for the cons, you will have less of a clean looking setup because you're adding more cables to the stage. You might also think that it looks silly having an extra cable going up to your hip. So if you're a band that really cares about the visual aspect of your performance, then this might not be the rig for you. One more slight drawback about the rig I'm going to be talking to you about is that it is a mono rig and not a stereo one. Alright, so let's talk about the things that you'll need. So you're going to need a Behringer Micromon MA400 a Behringer PowerPlay P2, an XLR cable, an instrument cable, a quarter inch to male XLR cable. I think it's a good idea to pick up some adapters so you don't have to worry about connecting to the monitoring source. The ones I picked up are a female XLR to quarter inch, a male XLR to quarter inch jack, and a speak on to quarter inch jack. And last but certainly not least, you'll need some in-ear monitors. Now the in-ears that I have are the Alien Ears AFR3s. They usually cost over $400, but I was able to get them for half of that through some special deal. Now these are custom in-ear monitors, and I think they're supposed to be good monitors, but I don't like them very much. They just don't sound very good to me. It sounds like there's too much of a boost in the high mids or something. Also, the left one goes into my ear a little too far, uh, which makes it so I can't really sing with it in. I could probably send it to them and have them fix that, but I just didn't really feel like going through that ordeal. I might end up doing that later. However, since today we're talking about a budget in-ear monitoring system, then I recommend you check out the KZ brand universal in-ear monitors. I've heard nothing but good things about the KZ brand, and I just ordered the KZ VSTs off of Amazon for like 20 bucks, so I might do a review on those later. So I had a chance to try out the KZ ZSTs and overall pretty good sounding pair of headphones. A little weak in the low end and a little bright for me, uh, but they'll definitely work for a singer, a guitar player, maybe even a drummer. Would not recommend these for a bass player. Uh, but if you do end up picking them up, I recommend you spend a few extra bucks and get these memory foam ear tips. They're gonna make them feel a lot more comfortable and they'll actually improve the isolation a little bit as well. All right, so now that you know everything that you'll need, I'll show you how it all works together. All right, so we've got my pedal board here. That's where I like to keep my micro monitor. And the first thing we're gonna do is connect the monitoring source into the micro monitor. Now you can either do this from the soundboard or the PA system itself, or what I'll typically do is just daisy chain the closest monitor wedge into my micro monitor. And that's where one of these adapters might come in handy because sometimes uh, I remember one gig I was playing and the wedge closest to me, the only output it had was a speak on output. So I decided to invest in some adapters just in case something like that happened again. And uh, yeah, it's a good idea to pick up one of these. The next thing you're going to want to do is connect your microphone into the micro monitor with your XLR cable. Uh, if you're a singer, that will be the microphone you're singing into. If you're a guitar player, that will be the microphone micing your amp, and so on and so forth for whatever you're playing, uh, whatever you need to hear. The way I usually have it rigged up is that it goes into my vocal effects processor, which then goes into the micro monitor, which goes out to the soundboard. But for this demonstration, I didn't want to add another step to make it more confusing. The green XLR cable I have here is the one going to the soundboard, and I didn't include this in the things that you would need to buy because the club will usually have one of these for you. The next thing you're going to want to do is connect your micro monitor to your PowerPlay P2 uh, with your quarter inch cable 
to male XLR cable. Now you can put your PowerPlay P2 on your belt and put your in-ears in. Also, you'll want to make sure that your micro monitor is set to mono right here. And there's a little mono stereo switch inside the PowerPlay P2 that you'll want to make sure is switched to mono. So when you're doing your sound check, have the sound guy dial in the best possible mix you can get without touching your own personal mic level. Save this knob for when you start playing so you'll have plenty of headroom should you need any more of yourself, which you most likely will. Some of you might be thinking that the micro monitor is unnecessary if you have the PowerPlay P2, which is technically true, but having this little bit of extra control makes a huge difference, so I consider the micro monitor essential to my rig. Well, I hope you found this video helpful. When I first came up with this rig, I was really excited when I used it for the first time because suddenly I could hear myself and my band members a lot clearer and I could hear my pitch when I was singing, which was really helpful. If you like this video, please like it and maybe share it with someone else who might like it. And uh, subscribe to this channel for more stuff like this.